Hello, I'm Gabriel Porch, and welcome to the LUTV Sports Break. Now, last week I talked about the press conference held to announce that Lamar University would be returning to the Southland Conference. And since the conference was held, I had the chance to speak with staff members to go a little in depth about the details of the move. Alumni hear the stories of what they went through. Uh, and I've only been here eight months. After announcing the decision to move back to the Southland Conference, staff members of Lamar University shared their favorite rivalry moments. And the one that everybody talks about the most is McNeese. Uh, they're only 50 miles down the road. Uh, they're, they're, you know, a very similar type of institution to Lamar. And apparently that rivalry runs very deep. <laughs> and certainly the McNeese game, I think a lot of our alumni lettermen and, and fans will, will look forward to that game year in, year out. Rivalries are what makes athletics fun. Uh, fans uh, love to have somebody to hate, and they love to be hated by somebody. And that's what makes it uh, special. That's the way things were with McNeese State, and we're more than excited. We can't be uh, any more excited to be reigniting uh, that rivalry in all of our sports across the board. The move from the WAG won't be as immediate as anticipated. Therefore, Lamar will have to wait a year until they officially return to the Southland Conference. At the moment, uh, according to policy, it, it will have to wait one year, and so it's July uh, 2023. However, there is the potential uh, that the commissioner of the Southland might work something out with the commissioner of the WAC. As we look uh, uh, forward uh, to moving to the Southland Conference, I guess the things that I will miss uh, uh, in terms of uh, the WAC are just the relationships that I've been able uh, to build in a very short uh, period of time. As we start to Pro progress in this program and really grow this program up, I think you'll see coming forward, you know, small steps of maturing and uh, as a program and, and just overall our team is going to grow up this off season and, you know, get stronger, faster and bigger and be, be more competitive this coming fall. Gabriel Porch, LUTV Sports, Lamar University. This season for the Panthers has had its ups while also having its downs. Owners Kendrick Perkins and Jay McDonald decided that it was time for a change. I spoke with the newly hired head coach, Chris Berry, about how he plans to turn this season around. The Beaumont Panthers will now be under new authority at the head coaching position. Uh, just building a rapport with the guys, talking to them daily. You know, uh, my, my main thing is uh, getting these guys where they want to go, so I ask them their goals and stuff like that and see what they're what they're trying to do and where they're trying to take this basketball thing to. Turning around a team mid-season isn't an easy task, but that's what Coach Barry sets out to do. And just basically just being from Houston and this my hometown, I want to see these guys win. I want to be able to turn this, this, this city around and do it for the Golden Triangle. And uh, I like a challenge. I like I like to be challenged and coming in at three and three, that lets me know that I got to turn this around. It's, it's on me and I, I know I can do, I know I can do the job. From coach to player, Chris Berry is not the only one making the transition from Dallas to Beaumont. I mean, I'm taking the transition pretty well. Is uh, we taking the same offense and schemes and defenses and bringing it to Beaumont? So everything has been a smooth transition. We just gotta uh, get some chemistry with the new teammates, and we'll be great. Barry has made a huge impact on his players, making it easier for the team to succeed. Um, I feel like he's a great players coach. So he's very hands-on with his players. He talks to you one-on-one, -on, -one, on and off the court. Uh, he tries to get like a great uh, relationship with you and we'll get to know you as a person and basketball player. And then with his offense, it just fits everyone. Um, it's no position for his offense. Uh, defense, same thing as everyone. It's a team thing, so, yeah. Y'all owe one, y'all owe one. That's one to the board, right? Gabriel Porch, LUTV Sports, Ford Park Arena. In the National Basketball Association, the Brooklyn Nets have had a roller coaster of a season. They were picked to win the most games in the regular season with 54.5 games by CBS Sports. The Nets ended league play with a 44-38 overall record, making them the seventh seed in the Eastern Conference. After losing their first matchup against the Celtics, the Nets will have a chance to redeem themselves tonight at 6 p.m. And missing one of their star players for majority of the regular season, Clay Thompson is back in action for the Golden State Warriors. Since returning, Thompson has averaged just over 20 points a game, in which he is tied for fifth in scoring. 
This Splash Brother is shooting 38.5% from behind the arc and 417 for his career. And after a strong start, the Warriors are 2-0 in the series against the Denver Nuggets. Thank you for tuning in to LUTV Sports Break, where we keep you in the game for every game. Be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter for more Lamar University sports. See you next time.